Ah, Apple computers. Finally refined chunks of aluminum that makes fans cheer and haters boo. Sometimes more loudly on both sides than what is probably warranted. So two of my favorite currently on the market are the 2020 MacBook Pro 13 and the 2019 MacBook Pro 16. Which of these should you choose for your portable computing needs? Let's find out. I didn't, I can't double slam them. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So right off the bat, if you weren't sure, yes, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, even the base model, is much, much more powerful than even the spec'd out 13 inch version for roughly the same price. But I'm gonna make the argument that power isn't actually all of that important. I'm saying it. I just, I'm throwing it down right now. Now there are a few cases, which we will get into here in a little bit, which that is not the case, but I'm not necessarily sure that power is the most important thing, just like resolution on a camera. What I wanna do today is compare these two computers in some common scenarios and see if the absolute power and cost of the 16 really trumps the portability and the base model budget friendliness of the 13. Let's get into it. First off, if you don't know these two devices at all, let's briefly briefly cover the most important specs. The MacBook Pro 13 comes in two different flavors. There is the lower end model, which is the one that I have. This comes equipped with an eighth generation Intel i5 chip. You can get up to a 1.7 gigahertz Intel i7 quad core processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and two terabytes of storage in this lower end version. Now the higher end version is really where the big refresh happened. You can get up to a 10th generation Intel i7 quad core, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and even a very impressive four terabyte solid state drive, which just let's, let's all pause for a second. Let's pause for a second and marvel that a computer this small, look at this, this small can have such a massive drive inside of it. That's that's pretty nuts to me. This lower end base model will run you $1,300 while the higher end base model clocks in at $1,800 and a fully spec'd out 13 inch monster will set you back, ouch, $3,600. I, I mean, I don't know. You can get some serious computing power for $3,600. Dang, 13. On the MacBook Pro 16 side of the house, there is a bit and I do mean a big bit of a jump in overall power. The base model comes equipped with a 2.6 gigahertz, six core Intel i7 with the ability to put in a darn impressive 2.4 gigahertz, eight core Intel i9 at the top end. That's the processor I'm rocking on my version. Other base model specs are 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, and even a Radeon 5000 series graphics card. Specking this monster out will give you that 2.4 gigahertz quad core i9, 64 gigabytes of RAM, an eight gigabyte Radeon 5500M graphics card, and a staggering, a staggering eight terabytes of storage. Eight terabytes of storage in a thin, light laptop. I mean, I'm impressed. You do have to pay for that in cash though. Like that, that comes with a price tag of $6,100. That is more than my motorcycle cost me. Legitimately, that is more than I paid for my Yamaha FZ07. Okay, so like I said in the beginning, the MacBook Pro 16 is the clear winner. It's the clear winner, it has the best specs, and specs are all that matter, right? But what about specs are all that matters? Done. Well, thankfully for those of us that actually have to use these devices to make things, that's not the case. So first off, let's talk about how these two computers compare if you want to use them as a quasi-permanent fixture, like a desktop replacement computer. The MacBook Pro 16 comes standard with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. So if you do want to set this up, like I have mine set up with a dock and external monitor and stuff like that, you have lots of options of ports to choose from. It's not the number of ports that matters to me. What matters to me is that you have ports on each side. This allows for a level of versatility the lower end 13 can't really touch. But speaking on this 13 inch base model, if you're using a dock like my CalDigit TS3 Plus, you really only need one Thunderbolt 3 port. And the benefit in docked in mode for the MacBook Pro 13 is actually quite striking. Being the monster that it is, the MacBook Pro 16 requires 96 watts of power to be properly charged and used at the same time. Now you can use lesser power bricks or options, but you will get a note on the computer saying that it isn't getting enough power. And for long days of work, that might end up causing you a problem. So for me, I use the dock for all of my IO, the SD card, the USB-A, the USB-C ports, and I use the included power brick to provide power. It's not a deal breaker, 
but it does mean that half of my ports are taken up right off the bat. And what's wild is, since the MacBook Pro 13 only needs 61 watts of power, the 86 provided by the dock is plenty to both charge and run the computer. Meaning that on both computers, half of the ports will be taking up, setting it up into a desktop configuration. It's not totally one for one though, only the more expensive 13 inch option has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, so you do only have the option of using them on one side on my lowest end base model, but again, half of the ports on both of these are taken up in the exact same way. Continuing to set these up for home use, both of those Thunderbolt 3 options can push signal to an external monitor. Now, the MacBook Pro 13 with those different levels of configurations, there's a lot of options out there which I will leave overlaid right here. The two that I really wanna mention right now is the higher end model can do either one 6K monitor, one 5K monitor, or two 4K monitors, and thankfully my monitor is 4K, so it has no problem. And even the lower end version can push images to at least one 4K monitor. But if you want a legit monitor array, I guess you could call it. The 16 does have much better capability. It can handle two 6K displays or four 4K displays. Dang, four 4K displays. My desk, I mean, not this desk, but the desk that I normally work on, it can barely like fit one. So from a technical standpoint, both of these would work as a home computing solution. You can connect a magic keyboard and mouse or any other preferred option to either, and two 4K displays is just about the right amount. At this point, it comes down to your power requirements. If you're doing demanding tasks like video editing, obviously the 16 will be able to render those files faster. I specifically say render because we've already proven in a previous video that even this, even this cheapest MacBook Pro 13 can actually cut 4K footage no problem in my preferred editor, Final Cut Pro X. The one thing that we do wanna check really quickly before we make a definitive statement though is thermal performance while rendering those videos. If you aren't getting the performance you are paying for, then it doesn't matter if you saved money on it, it's still wasted. I don't wanna recommend you buy a lower end computer to save money, just to not be able to use those specs on it. To test things, I ran the same 10 minute 4K file through both computers, and you can see up on screen right now how long it took the MacBook Pro 16 to render, which let's all agree is fantastic. That's faster than my iMac Pro renders the same thing. And the cheapest MacBook Pro 13 took this many minutes to render, which while it is slower, that's still totally doable and makes me think there was some legitimate optimization that happened on the hardware between generations. Because while this shares the same processor as my 2019 one that I used last year, I don't remember the 2019 handling this footage the same way. And I did keep them in like the open configuration. I kept them open like this, and I think that does help with the thermals, but it doesn't matter for me as I use the laptop as my second monitor to that main 4K display anyway. The so what of the at-home model is if you are just typing or doing normal spreadsheet work, I think either of these computers would work, and the power on hand in the 16 inch is probably wasted for that scenario. But let's also compare these in the way that nature intended as single system portable computers. Like if all you've got on hand is this device, how will it work out? Again, much like the desktop configuration, the MacBook Pro 16 has the bigger screen and the MacBook Pro 13 has the smaller screen. Boom, done, comparison over, thanks for watching. We all, we've all had our fun now. Seriously though, let's really kind of compare the much greater portability against the bigger powerful 16 inch computer. The MacBook Pro 13 has a built-in 58.2 watt hour lithium ion battery, giving a reported 11 hours of movie playback and 30 days of standby time. I don't know, do you ever just for like a month, you just not use your laptop and I don't know, I would turn it off if I was gonna leave it alone that long. What I really like about the MacBook Pro 13, my favorite part about this computer is how small it is. This is absolutely my favorite small laptop of all time. We've already mentioned this in this video, but I spent a few months last year using the 2019 version of this as my only computer. The quad core i5 has some serious power and the way that Apple's macOS operating system is optimized, you can do everything. Like you can do everything a content creator or business professional would need, whether plugged into a wall or not. I mean, this thing, it's fantastic. This is, again, one of my favorite computers ever made. Like we mentioned earlier, I also like the smaller power charging requirement because the smaller charging brick and will work on most airlines. And on the small motif, having traveled a lot for YouTube and my regular business, it's just so much easier to work on a small computer in places like coffee shops, airport and other quick spots, you know, when we are able to travel again sometime in the future, hopefully here soon. 
Something else that's really impressed me in the MacBook Pro 13, and something you'll hear me talk about all of the time, is the keyboard. Here they do have the new Magic Keyboard. As we all know, the Butterfly Keyboard is now in the past. Thankfully, thankfully in the past. So if you are concerned about the size here, maybe you're coming from a more traditional keyboard or a bigger laptop, Thankfully, you don't need to be worried about the typing experience. Much like this is my favorite small laptop, this is also my favorite keyboard on any laptop ever. I think this is the perfect combination of that Magic Apple keyboard, giving it the crispness of the keystrokes. But I also like that it's small enough that when I'm typing, I don't really have to reach or even stop to think about what my hands are doing. It just works so naturally. Like I've said in its dedicated videos, with the weights designed, you also get that very comfortable palm rest and massive trackpad, almost making a mouse pointless. The 13 Pro, mm, 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 mm. Though that's not, now we're in laptop land and we're traveling around. That's not to take away from the 16 inch though. And I'm not gonna surprise anybody by saying that the benefit of the 16 over the 13 is the absolute raw power on hand. However, that can be both a big benefit and a curse. Because it's bigger, Apple did manage to fit a much larger battery in here. In fact, this has the biggest battery that you can get before it's just not even allowed in an airplane anymore. I love saying that, that's the funniest thing. I love that they put such a big battery in here, it almost can't go in an airplane. But because of all this awesome cosmic power on hand, you actually get a pretty similar battery life between the two. But the power on hand here is nuts for a travel computer. I don't know what else you can get at this size that's this powerful. The i9, the RAM, the SSD size, this, right here is probably the most powerful computer that you can throw in a reasonably sized backpack. Obviously you will have to give up some ease of use and it, it won't be able to fit in the same cramped nooks and crannies like the MacBook Pro 13. I mean, look at the size difference here. It's pretty substantial. But if you need power or on a tight timeline for some kind of deliverable, whether it's a video edit, compiled program or other things I guess people use laptops for, what else do people use laptops for? This is absolutely king. Plus. Now that we can talk about its keyboard, it's also pretty darn amazing. This was the first laptop with the new version of the Magic Keyboard that's just as functional and amazing as the 13 inch model. It's got gigantic palm rests that you could basically like set a tent up on, like you could camp out on these palm rests right here. And the trackpad is almost the size of the MacBook Pro 13. Like the darn thing, no kidding, is bigger than my iPhone 11. Best trackpad ever made, fight me. Don't fight me. So now we've talked about how both of these would work as a desktop replacement and as a travel laptop, but there are a few things that I still wanna cover that didn't exactly fit into either of those categories. The speakers on both of these computers are really good. In fact, I would call them class leading in Ultrabooks for the MacBook Pro 13 and in traditional laptops for the MacBook Pro 16. I'm not an audiophile, so what I will say is if you really need the speakers on your laptop to be great, you have to go with the 16. They are nuts, they are nuts good. Also, let's quickly talk about the displays. Both are very sharp and crisp retina panels, but I wanna specifically point out the new design philosophy on the MacBook Pro 16. With its slimmer bezels, you can get much more screen real estate without needing to make the device all that much bigger, which again, that's awesome. The screen on the 13 inch isn't bad. It's probably the best portable screen that Apple has ever come up with. However, hopefully this year we'll get a 14 inch MacBook Pro that will do the same thing for the 13. I'd really like these bezels to get slimmed up a little bit. And Apple, if you wanted to put a dedicated GPU in that 14 inch model, I wouldn't say no, please, please could you do that? Last but certainly not least is the webcam on both of these devices. They both suck. There you go. At least they are even here. Both are rocking a 720p HD FaceTime camera that just looks bad. There's no other way to put it. This really, you've heard me complain about this a lot, this really needs to be fixed in the future because as we've all gotten a lot more distant, we might as well be able to look good when we're not in the office. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Which of these two comes out on top? It's unsurprising here. It's unsurprising here that if you want a more powerful computer, go with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's not even in question, and that was never the intent of this video to say that the MacBook Pro 13 could compete in the same league. It can't. It's just a more powerful device by a lot. Even the cheaper options like the base model will trounce the MacBook Pro 13, even if you spec out the MacBook Pro 13. But do you really need all that power? Honestly, honestly, do you really need that much power? If you are on the fence or know for a fact that all you'll do is type, 
make PowerPoints, make a spreadsheet or two, like office type stuff. I think that the Thunderbolt 3 is the great equalizer between these two laptops. And I think because of how easy it is to then set it up with a cheaper dock, you don't need as powerful of a dock to power this, or even some monitors will be able to power this by itself. You can set it up to be a desktop computer in a much easier way than the 16 inch version. You'll just need a little more time for the processor to do some of the same power tasks if you do need to do some of those power tasks. I'm a huge fan of both of these computers. Like I am a huge fan of both computers and I personally got the 16 inch to be my desktop replacement due to my requirements in video editing. But like I said, I spent many months not that long ago using last year's model of the 13 and had zero problems running a YouTube channel and that was doing very tough 4K video editing. If you like this video and are intrigued by the 13 inch model, here's my video saying why you should buy one. Wow, that's pretty fortuitous, huh? It's almost like it's all planned out. And you can find that video by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.